I refer to myself as anti anti Trump. So um, I'm critical of Trump. There's lots of his policies that I don't support. But I think the anti Trump movement of the past four years has just been completely nuts. In the US, there's the kind of election cycle there, and we're running up to the election. What is your take on what's going on there? It's kind of hard to ask a concise question, but just generally, what's your take, a short one, on the state of the US and politics there more broadly? Uh, it's not good at all. Um, and I thought the first televised debate was just atrocious, uh, really, really shockingly bad. And I watched it and I thought, um, you know, is this really the best that the American Republic has got? These kind of two aging blokes uh, shouting over each other, especially Trump, who was, I thought, uh, gave an incredibly bad performance or Biden who very often can't string a sentence together um, is often quite confused um, is this the best America has got I thought it was such a depressing spectacle I think it's what's going on in America at the moment is really interesting because the election is taking place against the backdrop of some of the worst instability America has experienced for, for 50 years um, and I think what we're witnessing is um, identity politics is now on the streets. I mean, it used to be restricted to universities and sometimes to workplaces. It's now on the streets. It's becoming more and more violent. Um, we're seeing people, uh, racial tensions are intensifying, but in an, in, in an identitarian form. Uh, there's actual shootings. Uh, huge areas have been burned down. I still don't think the media has had a honest reckoning with how much of American, how many American businesses and communities have been destroyed, very often working class and black communities. So that's the backdrop. Uh, this is a country deeply, deeply divided by the culture wars. Um, and I think whoever wins the election, those problems won't be sufficiently addressed. So I think that instability is going to linger on and explode at different times over the next four years. But in terms of the election itself, I think it's, it's weird and strange, but I do think it, it, it's pretty clearly a battle between, on the one hand, the kind of um, populist loudmouth Donald Trump, who has virtually no media support and is loathed by the kind of um, old liberal establishment, but has this fairly strong base of ordinary people who want politics to go in a new direction and who are sick of the old liberal establishment. So he, he, you've got him on one side, and on the other side, you've got the great white hope of the technocratic elites, which is Joe Biden, who is pretty hopeless. Um, so I think the, the weirdest thing in the US, from my point of view, is that both of these constituencies, on the one hand, you've got ordinary voters who want a more democratic and a, a renewed form of politics. And on the other side, you've got the kind of technocratic establishments who want to hold on to the old status quo. The problem is that both of those are represented by bad people. So Trump, I don't think, is a good representative for ordinary working voters who want America to change and, and improve. And Joe Biden is not a good representative for the technocratic elites who want to preserve the kind of neoliberal status quo of the, that existed prior to Brexit and prior to Trump. So both sides are being let down. And until they get lead to, leaders who better reflect their differences of opinion, we won't really see that clash of opinions take place. And I think that's a real problem. Okay, one final point. Do you not think that it's quite difficult to think straight about the nature of US politics and also to some extent British politics at the moment, that especially in the US because of the degree of intensity and what I perceive to be bias and groupthink against Trump? Mm. Even, because from my perspective, there are so many things I think warrant really serious criticism, which Trump does. But kind of it's impossible to delineate between that and just the degree of news coming out every single day from almost every mainstream source which is beyond just rational serious important scrutiny of what's being said and the policies being discussed and it goes into basically almost hysterical really propagandistic um the kind of that realm and i think it makes it hard to think straight because i i don't think that it's problematic to criticize trump at all but if you've got a media discussion which is so heavily weighted in that direction i'm not sure how the average voter is going to be able to step back and actually make a sane decision almost yeah um i agree i i refer to myself as anti anti trump so um i'm critical of trump there's lots of his policies that i don't support 
But I think the anti-Trump movement of the past four years has just been completely nuts. I think they have exaggerated how awful he is. I think they've exaggerated how evil he is. I think all that stuff four years ago about Trump being literally Hitler. And, you know, we had people marching in the streets of London with pictures of Trump looking like Hitler. There was loads of serious commentary comparing him to Hitler and talking about the 1930s. I thought that was completely deranged. I thought uh, there were two problems with it. The first is that it was it, it completely exaggerated the problem of Trump. He's nothing like Hitler whatsoever. And America has not become a fascist state. And it also engaged in historical relativism. So it kind of normalized the 1930s and it normalized the Nazi experience as if that was just another blip in history rather than the worst crime in history. So it screwed up our understanding of history and it screwed up our understanding of uh, the present and politics in the present. But the thing is, um, I I'm very, I'm fascinated by Trump because um, I disagree with him on a lot, but I, I find the depiction of him in the media to be, to be uh, just completely fake. And if yeah. you look, for example, if you look at, he's done about two or three speeches over the past few months, which I think have been absolutely brilliant speeches. He did one on critical race theory. He did one on cancel culture. He's talked about the importance of, of the American revolution and the fight for freedom and enlightenment values, essentially. Um, they were, uh, now they were badly delivered, but they were brilliantly written. So there's someone on Trump's team, who, I think, who understands the cultural and political tensions in society and has has largely come down on the right side of them pro freedom anti identity politics um pro martin luther king who trump quoted in a recent speech these are really interesting developments i think and they can't just be brushed aside but i think the most striking thing about trump is that he's unique among western politicians in the sense that he speaks directly to his base and he's got no choice but to speak directly to his base because the media absolutely hates him. Um, he's the only platform he's got is Twitter and his rallies, essentially. And um, he has to go directly to the populace because he can't go through all the normal filters because the normal filters call him Hitler and a fascist and everything else. So that's a really interesting and striking development, I think, in Western politics. And we might see more of that, where politicians, because of the hostility of the media, are forced to engage much more directly and, and democratically with ordinary people.